Okay, for the next thing I want to introduce, that's um, the way the project token and the menu tokens work. Because these are two tokens we haven't discussed yet, but they're available to you. So let me just illustrate this on paper real quick. So if I use HTTP colon slash slash, if I just said, and I could have www dot or not, whatever, domain.com, that's the domain, right? And then let's say on that domain, I want to create a particular project. So maybe I'm creating a project for a certain keyword stack, set of keywords. And maybe it's for cataract eye drops, let's just say. Or it could be anything. It could be um, a drywall repair contractor. And then inside there, I want to have particular menu items. I want sections of this project. So one section might be you know what this is and that's kind of it so it'll have its own index.html of course for that particular main page which is this right here that right there same thing um, why get the eye drops right anything like that and so what do we see we see three parts there's a domain and then inside the domain would be a project, and that's our cataract eye drops. And then there's the menu links, which is all the different uh, menu links that we might have. Control C, Control V. Like another section might be, you know, it could be the best eye drops. And then another section could be. Um, uh, why get the eye drops? The best eye drops. Who knows what else? What eye drops are for? You know, um, beat cataracts with eye drops. That we have these sections on your website, and you have several pages that all belong to the same folder that all continue dealing with the same theme. So Google sees not just that you have a page about it but that it has several links uh, going to side menu items that continue to talk generally speaking about the same thing and so that's our domain project menu and those are our separate links for the menu so really it's that that and that this is what you're seeing above it's kinda like menu 1 menu 2 menu 3 right but in every case we have a domain then we have a project then we have a menu item and it's just called menu and so on the CSV file and the index.html file, we want our token. So we might have our domain token, which is very doable. You can do this. And this is awesome for creating one project, one model page with one var sheet. And you can make that thing work for multiple domains. And we set up a project called the placeholder website that lets you work with one that's already done so you can see how the whole thing operates and inside the domain we have another token called project right and that's our project token and I'll show you where it reads from pretty soon and then the final token is the menu token <clears throat> okay now where these read from okay because this is the way it would be if you stuck it on the index.html file and you can use them in any combination. You can just have a token be simply domain, percentage sign, and then it could be slash contact dash us dot html. Okay, and that's a main page on the website. It comes right off the main domain. Okay, where it reads the domain from. Um, and then your project would be if you had something like cataract eye drops okay that would be the project in this case all right and then the menu would be the final menu item which probably wouldn't be that anymore it would be something else you know as we were going over up here and so you could have domain slash project and that could be like your top post all by itself that works and so you can do that as a link right and then you could also have it with a menu. You could, you cannot though. You cannot have domain slash menu right away, because that would be like having this thing that we're going to create, 
without having the project itself. It would probably be a broken link, right? That would be the idea. So this, which would be that, does not make any sense. It would probably be a broken link. The assumption is that the project comes first, then the menu items belong to the project, and the project items belong to the domain. Okay, So you can go down the structure, but you can't just skip like this. That doesn't work. Okay, That doesn't work. It would probably be broken. So where do you find these tokens? You know, you have to add them to the index.html file and you recognize that they're tokens. So this is how that would be, just like this. These are the three tokens you can add in any place that makes sense on your index.html file. Where do you find them with the var sheets? How do they look? Let me show you using the placeholder website that we have already since it's already outfitted for that. On here, you find a menu link and you recognize it because it has a very strange sort of syntax. We have it with three of these open tag symbols first. So it's open tag, open tab, tag, open tag, menu, all is one word. And in there, one of the choices is the word root. That is to create pages in the root of the project. Okay, That would mean the page that just belongs to the project itself, such as Control C, this. That's the domain and the project, and therefore there's nothing here, so that's the root folder of this project. And it's represented by saying the root is one place we want to create web pages in our menu, just simply the root, nothing further. Then we want our menu items to be these, for example, copy, and that means that this is what we're going to be creating at the end of all these links. Okay, that's where we're going to wind up with this whole layout like this, control C, control V, just like that. So we're going to wind up creating pages in all these sections all at once. It's absolutely awesome how that can work because this saves us having to create multiple projects one at a time we can do it all at once because of this we're adding categories for those of you familiar with WordPress this is like adding categories okay so that explains that part now where do we find real quick before I continue the domain and the project part we find that on the profile let me load up that profile here's the way we do it it's reading an index page and a var sheet that both are in the same folder, belong to the same run. It's going to put the pages here. The domain name, interesting. Moji-samples.com, we understand that's the domain slash, guess what? That's the project token. So the domain and the project tokens are read directly from the profile. It understands the difference because of the slash. You still need to use the slash in the linkage on the web page. But it does realize that what comes before the slash is the domain. What comes after the slash is the project. Okay, And then when you use FTP, it may be a direct connection just like that. Now realize that if that's my project and I want everything to link to it, all my sitemaps are going to be based with this, then I'm uploading pages to there. It's going to go into that section on FTP, right? All my pages need to start at that project level and the menus completed from there. Okay? Now, if I just want to change the project to something else, how would I do it? I would just change it to something else. I'm going to create pages now here. And if I'm going to do that, then I need to make sure that this matches, or I'm going to put all my pages in the wrong folder. Okay, now they match. No backslashes or anything, just like that, and they match. Now, I can check real quick and see if I already have pages there. And there are none. All right, fine, so I know. Good, I'm not going to override anything or mess with anything else I have. All right, so I'm set for 250 pages, upload to FTP. That's all good. I can save. 
And by the way, you can save these profiles as other profiles if you want. You could say moji dash samples dash um, who knows cataract eye drops right whatever it is that you can use to keep that in mind you can write it all the way out if you want you know cataract project right cataract project one wait whatever it is that you want to do and that way when you save them then you don't have to always go overwriting these things you can just keep them uh, so it's really up to you it's whatever you'd like to do and I can just upload that or whatever load that and it's ready and now again I have my CSV file open at the same time I'm talking to everybody uh, so let me just save um, cancel what do I want to do I want to explain the rest of this and that's this I do need to do that so here is what we're doing here these are the keywords this is the web page it's pointing to and these are backlinks that are going to show up at the bottom of the page on the website this is just a placeholder and that's could be any one of these keywords from this list right here just goes here okay this is a city state list that's kind of small it only has 3,700 city states mainly for California Colorado, Delaware, Florida, Georgia, Illinois, and that's it. <laughs> Just a handful of states, about five. Now, what do we do to create our menus in such a way that we take advantage of keyword optimization? Okay, well, here's how we do it. We copy this thing and we paste it right here, paste to overwrite everything in here, and that way it's going to create pages in the root of our project and also pages in all of these sub links but here's going to be the problem we need dashes you can't have spaces in links so highlight this okay first make sure that's clicked off that's true we're done with this these are keywords they don't need dashes they're supposed to be like that they point at this web page good we're trying to drive the rank up on this web page for these keywords so that's a good idea Okay, that's just some generic main keyword and I'm going to use that for my project name too with a dash on the profile because you can't have spaces and URLs but on the page like this it's perfectly fine with a space now in my menu that's referring to the links okay the URLs so I highlight all of that hit control H and everywhere there is a space I'm going to replace it with a dash and it'll replace just in that selection that I highlighted that's perfect now that's good it's gonna create pages in all these places but I need those pages to somehow link on the website and that's what this is one two three four five six seven different vars here's what they point at and you'll see this in a minute it'll just start to make sense moji-samples.com I have a home link that's just the regular domain I have about us newsletter and contact us and those are static but then I have project links you can see that this is the domain when you look down here at the link domain slash project slash menu you see the format so it is creating the project and the menu links and there's one two three four and then there's some more five six seven then the rest just keep kind of repeating down the page they're you know the same ones used in a couple of spots going down the page but they're all based on what is up here okay so there's seven total links and that is these one two three four five six what one two three four five six seven that are here very good so when it creates pages in the menu it needs to actually put those links into the page menus and that's what this is 9002 3 4 5 are exactly those links one this is 9002 that's 9003 9004 9005 okay 9006 9007 9008 that's pretty much it doesn't really matter what order they go in and you can use brackets or not use brackets if you know however you see fit now how many do I have here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten I have three more than I need going across but that's fine because you can use more than one choice 
And so page by page, it'll create different link names, but that's fine. We don't mind. We like getting the diversity. So I could just do this. I know I have, what, nine here? Paste. And I'm just going to take this, cut it, and paste. And then take some of these, cut it, and paste. And then take some of these, cut, and paste. Whoops. And then take these, cut, and paste. I've been putting two in every case, of course. So now what I need to do is just move a couple of these up. So I'm going to cut that, paste it here. Bang. And cut and paste. There. Now what I have is at least one item in each case, and they're all different. So it's not going to create duplicates of links being the same on the page. But that's good enough for my project here, <coughs> which I'm going to put in the Cataract Eye Drops folder on my website. And that's going to be my project name, as you saw earlier. So these match these. And these have to have dashes. And these have to have dashes because they're menu items on the page. Those are the keywords. And that's the destination website. Okay, this is just a city-state list again, and that just happens to be a placeholder one of these. Anyone will do. Okay, and that is good enough. And so now I can create my project for cataract eye drops. Now hold on, yeah, I did save, yes, close, no, and therefore now how do I do it? I open up my Moji samples, whichever one I want them. Let's say this one. I load that thing up, boom, and it's got my cataract eye drops, cataract eye drops, everything is set. I can save it. I dumped out my runs so I can start with a clean slate so I can see what I'm doing. Don't need to save that anymore. And this can get closed. And I'm just going to go ahead and process this out. So let me go next. And I'm just going to go ahead and process it out. And since that website was already built, we kind of know what it's doing, then I don't need to explore it too much. I mean, it's happening now. The pages are getting created right now, right in front of me. I know what it's doing and why it's doing it the way it's doing it. That's perfectly fine with me. It's creating also other files that you haven't seen before that take advantage of using the project token and the menu tokens. And that's a master sitemap, which has all the sitemaps that were generated in all these subfolders. In other words, there's an index page and sitemap in each one of these subfolders for its own section, its own menu item that spreads out the sitemap. So you don't have one big fat sitemap, but you have lots of little sitemaps. This is very, very good to do. Okay, And it has some other things as well, but this is the most important directly. Moji sitemap is a little different you can attach this to your main page in one spot and every time you generate new projects then the new projects you generate will be added to the moji sitemap.html that way you don't have to manually go creating new new connections to your front page all the time they'll always be added here as you do one project after the next okay and that's what it's doing here is keeping track of what was existing it's putting up more now and that's just awesome. And so anyway, that's what's going on there. And so now we can sort of explore it already. We can start to see it happening. It's unfolding now. So if we go to Moji, dash samples, cataract eye drops. OK, we have a front page. These links make sense. We've got our, let's just take a look at one, our domain with our project, cataract eye drops with its submenu item, Cataract. And I can click to another one. And it's the same thing. Domain, same project, but a different menu item. Dry eye conditions. And I can click to another one. And it's the same domain, same project, but Cataract One Eye. And that was one of the other menu items. Now they're all connected. They're all connecting properly. And all of it for this project, inside this project. And when I go to the bottom, all of these backlinks, like Cataract One Eye, 
cataract in one eye. That's kind of what that means. <clears throat> Point at the destination web page, which was the idea. So we can make this web page visible, okay, for the different keywords and start to drive rank for it, okay? It's a big deal. And I got a link to the main post here, the main menu item in this page, and all of these things work. They all link together properly and they're all there. And there you go. And it put up all the folders plus 46 more. Why do you think it needed 46 more? Well, it put up these master sitemaps and the Moji sitemaps. So if you just subtract those real quick, then you have whatever it is, 42 <laughs> or 40. I don't know, something like that. Uh, anyway, it, it created, I think it was 10, it was, folder items, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then the other ones are up here somewhere, 9, and then maybe one more way up here somewhere. And that, yeah, 10, maybe 11, whatever it is. It created all those, and inside each, again, it had to create the index, the index 2, sitemap, and sitemap. Okay, that's inside every one of those subfolder items. Okay, so all the individual sitemaps in these subsections are for its own section. But then here, there is also a master sitemap that has all the links. It's got the front page link from every one of the sections. And then all those sitemaps, that's all the sitemaps that we just generated. Okay, and that's cool. And the same thing here, it's even clickable. By the way, that's okay, and yes, we're closing. And now, when we look, Cataract Eye Drops Master Sitemap. Oops, and if it didn't show up, <laughs> then I gotta figure that out. Should be showing up, and if it's not showing up, then Master, master Sitemap, Master Dash Sitemap. Yeah, it looks like it should be showing up. So if it isn't, then it didn't upload properly. It's a new edition, so I may have to upload it manually. What I can do, though, is check it, right? Connect. Moji samples. Cataract eye drops. And the master, oh, it was renamed. When you upload more than once, especially, then it winds up getting renamed. And the first time around, if it's being, if it's happening like that, I gotta fix it. Rename, it's just a little glitch. Boom, and rename, boom. Okay, so we'll fix that, and then that'll be easy. It'll be in the next release, and then that way all of these always work, and all of these sections always work. <laughs> all of the related links, all of the subfolder menu items will always work, and you won't have to add them manually. That's what's just awesome. Okay, I'll get into that more when we talk more about strategy, making sure the links are interconnected, and I actually break all that stuff down in greater detail, but I will say this, and that's, you can take your master sitemap, or no, you can take, which one is it, the master or the moji? Moji sitemap.html. Oh, it's probably renamed to number one, too, huh? Or if it isn't... <laughs> Oh, that's why, because it's supposed to be on the root. It's not supposed to be in there. It's supposed to be in the root. Mm, yeah, emoji sitemap. That's right. It's in the root. Sorry. Not trying to confuse. We did this because it's new and powerful. Let me get rid of that one. And um, this takes care of a lot of stuff that we manually had to do. But we're just getting used to it because we just invented it. It's the latest, greatest feature, and it's really no joke at all. It's very serious how cool this is and how well it works. It really creates the connections for everything at once, and that's the point. And I don't know if that's still up. Nope, it's not, and I didn't think it was. But I'll fix it. Like I said, this got done along the way, so some of the files were still there on the list. Uh, but anyway, yeah, this connects all of the sub-projects together so that the bots see everything really, really fast and everything gets indexed much faster this way. And you rank faster, too, because Google likes the arrangement <clears throat> and everything being connected properly. 
So that's what's happening there. It's really a big deal. We're just getting used to it. So I'll finish explaining as we go and make sure the glitches are out of it. Other than that, it's it's there. It's done. It's bigger and better than we've ever done. All the websites we've done before, we never had that functionality already built in. We just got it in and just started to play with it recently when we had a chance. Okay, that's good enough now for you to understand how the domain tokens work, the project tokens, the menu tokens, how to use links. Um, enough to understand anyway. I mean, obviously, the more you play with your own files, the easier it is for you to create any kind of project you want. In the meantime, we do, of course, have forums, Moji forums for all the Moji Pro owners. So you can always go in the forum and ask if you have a coding question and we can answer your question and everyone else can read and learn from what each other is doing that way, but about how things work and see if somebody else answered a question that is useful to them. It's all interesting reading. All right, and I think I should wrap this recording up. We covered a lot in it and that should help a great deal. That's all the main stuff from here. Uh, there's a separate section dealing with the placeholder website and you guys will find that anyway on the main training from mojicrew.com. There's the video series that teaches all this and the placeholder website sections in there. That's for creating instant backlinks with a website project that's already done for you. That's exactly what this is that we just did. This whole project here that we just did where you can just add the keywords you want and you can throw in the destination web pages you want, toss in a main domain, stick in whatever you want for city states and then do the menu bit that we just did all this comes free when you get the Moji Pro and you can use this to create huge backlinking sites that drive traffic to your main site for your main keywords so all those zombie sites are side sites it creates those pages for you and one site we showed you the infoabout.com has about 40,000 of those pages on it and that's just one Somebody said, how many different websites exist out there that use that placeholder website, just out of sheer curiosity? And the best we could come up with was, if you do a search for Moji 800, 1200 Word, that just uses some of the variations. There's 272,000 pages showing up that are all based on that specific uh, sample of words out of the VAR sheet. That's just some of the variations out of all of the variation no one ever expects anyone to read this stuff but there you have it it's actually in and this is neat because it's so big uh, and you can use this for anything you want 272,000 such pages using the same template I mean pretty much all of them have very similar looks not that one per se that's that other project but take a look this is a different website workfromhome.biz. What about this? That's a different website. What about this? That's a different website. What else do we have? Let me see. There's that one. All these are just different websites all using the same template. It's okay with Google because the keyword optimization on the page is different in every single case and that's absolutely important. Google sees that this page is about import cars, import cars, it's connected to more pages about import cars, and it's all related to import cars, which is pointing out this guy's website on the backlink, right, which drives this website up for import cars. It's just one of the keywords this guy's going for, and I don't know how many pages he has on his site, but the bigger he makes his site and the more stuff he does with it, then absolutely the more projects he can get going and he can show up for more things that he wants to show up for like a loop change also points to the exact same page it's a, a vote on a different web page all this stuff adds up and so it's absolutely huge and fast what you can do and I think you're starting to understand that now for creating massive websites and creating all the backlinking you want on other websites we have your back we have you covered and you're going to be able to saturate Google for whatever you want. And that's how you get a lot of sales inquiries and sales. Okay.